Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be in this part of the world. Welcome to another session of my presentation series. And this time, uh, my the topic for my presentation is uh, understanding schematics of the control of a high voltage circuit breaker. My good name is John Kweku Amu Otu, and I've been a professional electrical engineer for the past uh, 31 years. I'm based in the United States of America. Okay, so now let's talk about uh, some logistics uh, in YouTube. Okay, so if you watch this my presentation and if you like it, don't forget to select the like button. And also, don't forget to share, 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 and select the subscribe uh, button in YouTube. Also, this is my YouTube channel and has uh, a lot of uh, learning presentations out there for a young engineer, you know, an engineer just, just started, and a developing engineer. And I also, as an experienced engineer, you know, sometimes as experienced engineers, uh, we require uh, refresher courses. So these uh, presentations uh, that I have over there will help you a lot to refresh yourself and on a yearly basis okay so um the schematics are for uh high voltage circuit breakers basically consists of a closing circuit a tripping circuit and uh alarm circuit and announcer circuits right okay and auxiliary circuits okay so um for breakers that are higher you know with a high voltage especially 69 kv and above 115 kv 230 kv 345 kv uh, 500 kv 765 kv usually the closing circuit is on its own drawing then the tripping circuit is on its own drawing and for these high voltage circuit breakers uh, usually you have two tripping circuits for reliability you know because you know you don't want to depend on only one tripping circuit so you have a uh, tripping circuit one and tripping circuit two and uh even after the tripping circuit you have a backup uh, failure uh breaker failure uh, relay that can trip a uh, remote uh, circuit breakers that is integrated to tripping circuit two okay so now let's basically uh, take a deep dive into this um closing circuit okay so as you can see over here we have a 49 mx coil right okay so if you have a cube relay right okay those are called a control relays and inside this um control relay is this coil right okay so and inside the uh, cube uh, the cube really are multiple contacts you can have a uh, six contacts nine contacts uh, 12 contacts 16 contacts right okay so which are basically normally open normally closed contacts many of them so uh the 49 mx means that okay this cube really first of all is a thermal management really control really for a motor right and the X means that it is an auxiliary relay. Okay, so you can you have a uh, the 49. If this is 49 MX, right? There is a 49 main relay, right? That is dead. So this auxiliary relay is integrated to this. And usually in schematics and wiring, the 49 MX relay, which is an auxiliary relay is implemented especially when you need more contacts let's say the number of contacts that is in this uh control relay that is the main 49 uh, relay um is not enough and you want to multiply the contacts so that is when you utilize uh, these auxiliary relays and secondly if let's say um a contact that you need from these let's say the uh, there's something they call a wetting voltage that is the voltage that goes through uh, the contact if that contact voltage that you need is different from this uh, contact voltage that is in this relay then you need an auxiliary relay to basically uh, integrate with this one two for you to achieve uh, the required voltage let's say you know you need a, a 24 a 4 volts uh wet voltage right and this con uh, relay has contact that basically it's a uh, 12 volts right or 48 volts right it means that you cannot use that contact to achieve whatever purpose that you, you want to use you need uh, 24 volts so it means that you need to integrate another auxiliary relay and that is what this 49 mx uh, is and this is the core for this 
the 49 auxiliary relay to be able to achieve uh, their 24 volts contacts that you need because the contacts are rated right you know because if you use the uh, the contact for the right for the wrong rating of voltage the contacts are going to burn right so that is why we use uh, that is when uh, auxiliary relays uh, come into play so this these are the two reasons right the first one is basically to multiply the contacts and use it for other purposes other functions and secondly if uh, you need a contact uh, to basically uh, perform a function and the, that contact uh, requires a different voltage from the main auxiliary then that is when uh, you integrate um, an auxiliary relay okay so so as you can see these contacts over here right it's over here and this is a um, a switch right okay so these are all they are in power right it means that any of these conditions right should give um, a permissive uh, to the energization of uh, this coil 49 mx right any of them right so that is why they are in power right and any power circuits you know this or this or this or this so either this or this or this or this these contacts when they are energized you see it's a normally open contact right so if a wedding voltage uh, passes through it right then it's going to energize it and it's going to change state from normally open to normally closed and that should be able to energize this um coil for this relay okay so that one and in series with this okay so any of this any of this in series with this normally closed contact it means that okay in normal operation right this is um, uh, basically you know a soft state it's a normally closed um, contact so once any of these uh, contacts any of these um, operations uh, basically you know uh, this changes state from normally open to normally closed or this you know this also from normally open to normally closed or basically you close the switch or then if that is in series with this that should give the permission to be able able to energize uh, this uh, uh, 49mx uh, coil and that uh, auxiliary relay as such okay on the other hand you can also go through this part so this is a, an all right either this or this part right as you can see over here is that going through here or going through here right to come here but if you go through this part you have to go through a fuse link so that is uh, basically uh, the part of the schematics okay so this this part basically also tells you another permissive right okay so this is a, a 48t right okay so this is uh basically um, another control relay, right? Uh, basically, that uh, um, talks about uh, basically timing, right? Uh, it's a timer relay coil. Okay, so it means that it requires a permissive from this contact 42M. So that is a running motor. So that is a control, uh, compressor motor. Okay, so it means that uh, if the motor is running, the compressor is running right that uh, contact is going to change state from a normally open to a normally close right normally open to a normally close and basically when it is closed then that is when the wearing voltage uh, passes through to energize uh, uh, this uh, uh, coil of uh, this relay okay so now let's talk about this okay also this, these are all what you are seeing over here these are all permissive strengths they call them permissive strengths you know that's the, uh, the industry technical word for this you know that is a permissive you know it means that it's a string of series connections okay all these have to take place for you to be able to close the breaker okay so as you can see over here 52 c 52 c is the coil the closing coil of the breaker that 
that high voltage circuit breaker has three coils, right? It has a closing coil, then it has a tripping coil, one tripping coil, two. Okay, so this is the closing coil, right? Okay, so these are all the permissives. This is an all, right? If they are in peril. These are all the permissives that is required. And another permissive string, as you can see over here. Okay, so now let's take a look at uh, 52Y. Okay, so 52Y basically is called anti pump relay. Okay, so let's say you energize, um, you perform closing of a breaker, right? And the breaker closes in, right? Then this anti-pump relay, what it does is it prevents the breaker from opening and close, opening and closing. So that is what they call anti-pump, right? It keeps it in that closed position, unless of course you basically open it yourself, right? So what it does is there is a relay that it has that would drop out uh, the 52X, the, the, call it a ceiling relay. It drops it out to prevent uh, this anti-pump uh, action. Okay, so this is what they call, this is the relay coil for the anti-pump uh, control relay. Okay, so like I told you that, you know, you have a anti-pump relay, right? 52Y. And inside the cube relay, right, you have a, a coil. And inside the relay, you have a many contacts, right? Let's say 6, 9, 12, 16, which are normally open, normally closed, right? Okay, so inside this relay is what uh, you have uh, those uh, multiple contacts, okay? So for me to be able to energize the anti-pump relay, right? These are all the permissives that I need, right? I need a, this anti-pumper uh, contact, normally open contact, right? 52Y, and also an auxiliary, a permission from an auxiliary relay that basically the breaker status. 52A, that is an auxiliary contact. An auxiliary contact that tells you that uh, the position of uh, the breaker is the breaker open or closed. Okay, so the 52A, if the breaker is closed, basically it changes state from normally open to normally closed, right? Okay, so either this or this, they are in parallel. These two conditions, either them, right? Should give you the permission to be able to energize this anti-pump relay. Okay, so next is this other contact from the anti-pump relay, right? So either this or this should be in series or this to be able to energize. So what this um, contact is saying that in the self state, in the normal self state, right? It is already closed, right? So, voltage is already going through, right? If you take the voltage out, then that is when it changes state from normally open to normally closed to normally open, right? So, either that path or this path going through a fuse should be able to energize this anti pump relay. Okay, so now let's talk about the, permiss the permissives uh, to be able to energize uh, this uh, closing coil, right? Okay, so. I need um, a 52Y anti-pump relay that should be energized from this anti-pump relay coil, right? That has already been energized. Then I need a 
the status of the breaker 52b okay so uh, the auxiliary contacts for the uh, breaker is the 52a and 52b and sometimes some of the manufacturers will tell you 52aa and 52bb right so those are basically um it has a lot of contacts you know uh, compared to let's say the 52aa has more contact than and that they are more heavy duty uh, contact uh, compared to the 52a and likewise the 52bb contacts has more contact and much more heavy duty uh, compared to the 52b okay so uh the 52a like i told you that it is a normally open contact and when the breaker moves from open position to closed position it changes state from normally open to normally closed on the other hand the 52b contact right performs opposite right in the self state right it is normally closed okay so when the breaker changes position to open uh, position you know if the breaker changes to a closed position then that is when it changes from uh, normally closed to normally open so that is the difference between those uh, two contacts right one changes one changes from the self state of normally open right and when the breaker closes it changes to normally closed contact then the other one in the self state when the breaker is open it is closed that is its self state then when the breaker uh closes it changes from normally closed to normally open position okay so that is the permissive in it uh, from that breaker it want to make sure that breaker is already open so that's an indication status that comes in because you know you want to make sure that the, is the breaker open right and has the breaker changed state right so that is what uh, this uh, uh, permissive contact is required then it requires uh, this 49 mx right from this relay auxiliary relay right it, it needs that, that contact as a permissive to be able to energize the closing coil then it needs the 42m from the compressor motor right then it also needs a, another contact from the compressor motor then it needs the 63 gene lx okay so the 63 gene lx is a gas indicator the sf6 gas right this high voltage circuit breaker has a sf6 gas as its dielectric medium right that's what it uses to basically operate the breaker opening and closing when there's an arcing right it uses it to extinguish uh, uh, the arc okay so this uh 63g lx basically tells uh um this permissive string the st it's a status right about uh the uh quantity the pressure level right uh of the sf gas is adequate for the breaker to perform that closing function okay so this is the status uh, from the sf gas uh, monitoring uh, density you know there's a density pressure density uh, gas monitoring device uh, and uh, basically the 63 glx is the pressure or the density of the sf6 gas so that itself comes as a permissive okay so on the side is basically indication from the protective relay the transmission line protective relay right okay so indication has to come from that relay to tell you that relay is ready that's a self check status from this relay so that is of those either this or this they are in power right so that indication from this one or that indication from this other relay the two relays right primary and secondary right transmission line relays okay so their contact has to give that permissive right it has to uh, basically change state from um normally open 
to normally close to give that indication to allow the closing permissive string to perform its function okay so next on the string is 43 l r okay so 43 is a control switch right so as you can see this is uh, basically you know the layout of uh, the control switch that tells you uh, the positions and uh, basically it's a contact handle right okay the, and the contacts that are in that so basically you know in in, the, in um on the front of uh, the operating um panel or cubicle of uh, the breaker you see the con it's, a, it's a control switch right okay so that control switch has local or remote local means you're operating the high voltage circuit breaker locally right let's say a maintenance technician operator goes there you know operating then remote means uh, you are in a control center or scatter uh, system and operating uh, the breaker opening and close from that end okay so it gives you that option so it, when you're operate, operating the breaker locally these are the contacts that you are utilizing these are the contacts you are utilizing and if you are operating remotely these are the contacts who you are utilizing from data handle of a control switch so basically you know uh, the control um, switch and basically has a long uh, and uh, around it a peripheral right it has a lot of our uh, multiple of, of contacts right um, you know about uh, 20 30 you know contacts so basically you know i think as you can see over here, the number if it shows you probably about 40 contacts right so um these contacts are they are using are uh, normally open contacts uh, uh, as a uh, a soft state and uh, basically when you operate it it changes state from normally open to normally closed okay so depending on the location whether you're operating the uh, the breaker lo locally you know basically you know that self um that contact uh, that you are using you know is from here then you can also basically energize it through a push button you know it gives you the option of uh, utilizing a push button to basically you know uh, operate uh, you know uh, the breaker okay so this premise this shows you all the permissive string that is required uh, to basically close uh, the breaker okay then you can also have this path right okay so you have um, a contact uh, that is coming from a breaker failure right okay let's say if uh, a breaker fails to close right uh, right you need a uh, basically an auxiliary contact uh, let's say lockout uh, really that comes from the breaker failure uh, really okay so that itself also has to be reset remember you know it has to be reset you know let's say you know the uh, the lockout really for the breaker failure operating right then let's say you know due to um, a breaker failing to close or trip right then that uh, lockout relay has to be reset so that is what it's asking you right so this is the lockout relay for the breaker failure it requires a reset after its operation then it this also requires a reset right so both have to be reset for this permissive string to work right then also it requires uh, a reset let's say if uh, the transformer 8061 means uh, the transformer lockout relay has operated you know due to a fault in the transformer right okay so that itself requires a reset you know after the operation of the lockout relay to allow you to be able to close the breaker okay so that is what uh, this means okay so this is uh, basically that length of that permissive string that all of them come here okay so then you have uh, these other um, strings over here yeah so these are all other contacts right that is also needed you know to be part of this uh, uh string so this is also another contactor 
that is coming from uh, the breaker. So this becomes your permissive uh, string. Then over here, it's uh, another coil. Uh, that is um, um, another control relay, right? And this is all the part of that uh, uh, permissive string. So you have uh, this uh, 52B, which means that, you know, that is an auxiliary contact. Then you have uh, this uh, um, instantaneous uh, contact, uh, you know, basically, you know, uh, this uh, contact also gives a permissive uh, to this uh, uh, relay call to be energized. Okay, so that itself is uh, basically, you know, your closing uh, permissive circuit. So now let's talk about uh, um, indication, you know, very, very important, right? Okay, to basically um, see the indication of uh, the breaker. So the green light over here basically shows you uh, your indication and then that uh, basically your breaker has been energized. Okay, so these are all the permissives, right? Uh, that is needed, you know, to show you your in indication. So this is an auxiliary um, uh, contact that gives a permissive uh, that is wired to this uh, uh, green light over here to show the indication of uh, that uh, uh, breaker okay so um you know you can have a red light that shows uh, the breaker is um, uh, closed and a green light uh, that shows uh, the breaker is open okay so now um let's talk about uh basically you know manually tripping you know sometimes too you can manually uh trip uh, uh the uh breaker okay so basically these are all it shows you all how to manually uh, trip uh, uh, the breaker. So this is uh, uh, the permissive strings and uh, also scatter control, the ability to be able to uh, operate the breaker from the scatter end. Okay, so these are all the contacts, right? And these are all the relays uh, that is uh, required uh, in uh, the multifunction uh, relay that is uh, uh, needed. You know, so this gives you the permissive uh, string and also, uh, this also shows you the manual closing of the breaker. This is a manual, manual tripping of the breaker, and this is a manual closing of the breaker. So this also shows you all the, uh, the strings, all the contacts uh, that you need uh, to be able to close uh, uh, the breaker uh, manually. Right. Okay, so now let's move on to... Okay, so now let's uh, move and uh, pivot on the tripping circuit. Okay, so for, like I indicated earlier on the earlier slides, right? Okay, so if uh, for voltages, uh, high voltage circuit breakers that have uh, operated at a voltages of uh, 115 kV and above, uh, you know, they have uh, one closing circuit and two tripping circuit. Tripping circuit one, tripping circuit two. So you see that that uh, circuit breaker has uh, tr uh, two trip coils, right? Okay. The reason why it is uh, utilized is basically for redundancy and reliability. Very, very important, you know, because uh, at that high voltage uh, is very important that um, you should be able to, if uh, the trip call should fail, trip call fails, or, you know, all the time, you know, because uh, you know, sometimes, you know, there are many causes where a trip call will fail. You know, it can burn, the call can burn, and also, you know, not adequate voltage uh, to the coil to be able to energize uh, the coil, you know. So this, there are so many, um, uh, means uh, that the trip call can uh, fail. So you need to have a backup uh, if uh, one trip call should fail. And even then, uh, uh, beyond that, uh, if uh, a trip second trip call should, should fail, you should have a, a breaker failure scheme that will be integrated to the, you know, if the second trip call should fail, that should be able to tri uh, trip uh, a remote uh, breaker, uh, uh, you know, uh, to isolate, uh, you know, the fault. Okay, so now let's take a look at uh, uh the trip circuit okay as you can see over here trip circuit t1 right okay so over here it's uh basically the voltages that are applied uh to it's called a control voltage right control control voltage okay so you can have a control voltage let's say uh 125 volts DC, 48 volts DC, 
that is uh, basically um, applied uh, to the control circuit for the high voltage circuit breaker. So that is what you see over here, right? Plus negative, and that is coming from a battery system. You know uh, that has uh, basically a DC battery charger and a battery system you know that basically has been has many cells that has been put together to achieve uh, the required uh, dc uh, control uh, voltage okay so inside uh, the circuit breaker right it's this fuse that disconnects right so this is what you see over here is a fuse that disconnects and that is, that is what you see inside the circuit breaker uh, control uh, panel or control cubicle right uh, you you see this uh, fuse the uh, disconnect uh, uh, switch over over the you know so many a times uh, you know if you are doing testing for the uh, breaker you know operating open and close uh, that is what I uh, basically you uh, operate you know to basically energization you know uh, how to uh, integrate it to the control uh, voltage okay so as you can see over here this is a local control right as you you know and that is uh, uh, spelled out uh, you know and um, let's see so similarly right uh, uh, just like uh, the closing circuit where i made mention that uh, there is something they call the uh, permissive strength all the series of contacts all the series of uh, uh, functions that is required to be able to trip that is needed to be able to trip uh, the circuit right okay so the first one is under voltage condition right and that relay auxiliary relay 27 27 means under voltage that relay control relay has to be energized the coil of that has to be energized right has to be energized so it is always energized let me put it that way okay so um as you can see over here so next is 52t1 as you can see over here 52t1 is the trip coil for the breaker That is the trip coil for the breaker okay so and it tells you all the permissives right right from here let's take a look at uh, this part okay so the first one is uh to trip it locally using this push button right so that one has to be in series with this control switch remember i made mention that uh, there is a a control switch that is 43 l or r right that can be operated locally or remote right so that is in series with this so basically you once uh you are you you know either you're operating locally or remote uh, basically you switch the switch uh to that position let's say if uh um an operator should go to the substation and be able and wants to operate uh, the circuit breaker right so that is called local but from a skater or control center it is called remote right okay so you put the selector switch in that position and uh, basically whatever you know uh, mode that you are operating so you then you basically you know push the, the push button and basically you know you should be able to trip and it should be in series with 63 glx so 63 glx is an auxiliary relay control relay right okay so it is a gas uh, um, switch really basically it's measuring the pressure and density of the gas level right and remember you know adequate gas level based on the, uh, the set of criteria right there's a set point for uh, gas uh, that is needed for the operation of the circuit breaker so if the pressure and the density of the gas falls to a certain point basically it uh, the circuit breaker has to be tripped 
right? Because uh, it's basically can lead to a lot of uh, um, malfunctions of uh, the circuit breaker. So that is what uh, this uh, auxiliary relay is. If that auxiliary relay 63 GLX is energized based on inadequate pressure, but let's say the gas pressure has fallen to uh, the threshold of uh, the cutout. There's something they call cutout, right? Maximum, minimum, and below that is the cutout uh, pressure, where basically you need to trip, trip uh, uh, the circuit breaker. Then also the status 52A, right? Remember, I told you that uh, 52A. Basically, if uh, the circuit breaker is open, this contact is open. But if the circuit breaker is closed, this contact changes state, right? So, what is saying that it needs an indication that the circuit breaker is closed, right? If this contact has changed state from normally open to a normally closed based on the breaker uh, indication status. Right, it's telling uh, this uh, trip call that yes, the breaker is closed for you, you know, to to trip. Right, okay. So next is this path. Right, so you have the other path, right, where you can operate uh, the breaker locally. Then you have this other path that you can operate uh, the breaker remotely, right? Okay, so sometimes you know, let's say you have a uh, a generation facility right and you have a uh, two transmission lines right rated at let's say 115 kb or 230 kb transmission line going from here to the other end right and you have another generation facility that is here right and you have a uh, breakers that are located right here breakers that are located okay so if uh, there should be a fault here, right? Definitely. Um, the loads that are tied to this transmission line, right? Are going to be transferred automatically to this line. So this line might end up being overloaded. And uh, basically if it is overloaded, then basically that can uh, call, cause, uh, you know, basically thermal sagging of the line and uh, basically overloading of the line and cascading faults on the line. So. There's something they call remedial action scheme, right? Uh, it's a protection scheme that is uh, basically built and based on certain uh, criteria, right? And now one of the criteria that is what I gave you, if there should be a fault on this line and to avoid uh, basically pushing all the uh, load uh, um, that is on this line to this line to overload it, uh, basically what it does is this remedial action scheme basically trips the generator that is here and trips the generator that is here. So that is what, uh, you know. So what this part is telling, saying that uh, when that occurs, right, then I should, you know, um, should be able to be able to have operate and uh, trip the breaker through a remedial action scheme, right? And uh, that also needs a uh, permissive uh, through this uh, control uh, switch that is basically in remote status. Remember, I told you that uh, the control switch uh, 42 43 L R L means local, R means remote. So it means that uh, it requires that the 43 uh, has to be 43 R in remote status. Similarly, on this part where I'm operating locally, this 43 has to be 43 L in local status. You know? Like I told you that uh, in local mode, these are the contacts that are used, right? And remotely, these are the contacts that are used. Okay, so the other part. Now let's talk about uh, um, transformer uh, overcurrent protection. If there should be a fault in the transformer, that sh also should provide the path to be able to trip their circuit breaker. Right, to be able to energize uh, the trip call of the circuit breaker. The trip call is 52T1. Okay, so this is the other part. Remember, this is part one, part two, part three. They are all in parallel. So any of those conditions should be able to 
provide all the permissive strings uh, for you to be able to trip the circuit breaker. Okay, so the first one is if I should have a, a fault, ground fault on the transformer, right? So 51, 50, uh, 51 uh, uh, time, you know, uh, uh, phase uh, over current. 51 means uh, time uh, phase over current. Or 51N, that's this uh, neutral phase over current. If I should have any of these uh, conditions on the transformer that is uh, in the substation or the switchyard, then I should provide the permissive string to be able to trip the circuit breaker. And that is perfectly true. If you have a, a transformer that is um, in the switchyard and there should be a fault on the transformer, then that means that you know you, you need a, the contact from the relay that is performing um, time phase over current function or neutral uh, phase uh, time over current function. These are the uh, two functions, uh, basically two elements in that relay that should be able to trip uh, uh, the uh, circuit breaker by energizing the trip coil. And the first one is 51. That is uh, time phase over current or phase uh, time over current. Then the second one is neutral phase over current. That is 51N. Okay, so now let's go to the other part over here. That is uh, if there should be a fault on this line. Right? So that relay, you know, if a transmission line relay that is uh, protecting both ends of uh, the transmission line, one is located here, one is located here. One is located here, one is located here. That should be able to trip this circuit breaker and that is perfectly true right so the output of that transmission line really has to be asserted right the tr you know the uh, trip output contact right here has to change state from normally open to normally closed to be able to trip this uh breaker okay so here it's a trip call monitor Right. Okay. So very, very, very important. You know, because you know, like I told you, very long transmission line. You know, hundreds of uh, kilometers. Right. Okay. And uh, you know, very high voltage. Right. And uh, so very, very important that uh, uh, the trip call is monitored. You know, uh, to make sure. Remember, I told you that you know, uh, the call can fail. You know, it can burn. It can have uh, inadequate voltage. It can. You know, there's so many factors. Uh, you know, that can cause uh, the trip call you know, uh, to malfunction, right? Okay, so it is very important that, that uh, you monitor the healthy status of uh, the trip call. And that is what uh, this uh, uh, auxiliary really does. So TCM means uh, trip call monitor. It monitors uh, uh, the call of uh, the trip uh, uh, the trip call. Okay, so next is uh, basically, you know, the ability to operate it remotely very very important from SCADA or energy control center right you should be have you know the ability to be able to operate this breaker remotely so when it when that happens uh, basically you know this uh, uh, 43 um, uh, control switch is in remote status right so it has to be in remote status and the, the right contact has to be uh, selected then this contact from the SCADA system and the RTU remember you have an RTU cabinet, remote terminal unit cabinet, and now uh, there are relays there, right? And that is integrated through your scalar system or your control center, right? So when you operate it, you know, through your logic, you know, system, that should be able to energize this uh, uh, control relay in the remote terminal unit, and that itself uh, should be, you know, then is to change state and uh, for you to be able to energize the strip call to trip the breaker okay so this part is basically the status of the relay uh, the breaker that is uh if uh, you should uh, trip uh, uh, the breaker and uh, basically the indication so these are basically uh, indication uh, for the uh, breaker in uh, uh, 
let's say an announcer, you know, a panel, or local um, uh, indication, or remote, you know, uh, indication. You know, so these are lights, indication lights that tells you that uh, the breaker has stripped yeah, and uh, uh, the color is uh, the red. Okay, so now let's talk about uh, the second tripping circuit. Remember, I made mention that uh, uh, for very high voltage uh, circuit breakers, uh, 115 kV and above, uh, 230 kV, 345 kV, uh, 500 kV, 765 kV, and uh, ultra high voltage uh, circuit breakers, uh, we have a uh, two trip circuit, right? Okay, and a trip, two trip uh, coils. Okay, so for redundancy and for reliability. You know, because of uh, you know, uh, sometimes uh, the trip circuit, uh, the trip um, breakers uh, coils uh, can malfunction. Okay, so, but the second trip circuit, uh, basically, if it should fail, then it has to be integrated to a backup, a, a breaker failure, really, right? Yeah. So, so it gives uh, the chance uh, for the breaker failure, really, to be able to trip uh, any remote uh, breaker to be able to isolate uh, the fault. Okay. So now let's talk about. Uh, um, I think I did mention about uh, this uh, uh, disconnect switches, you know, that are basically local to the uh, breaker, right? Okay. So uh, these are under voltage. Uh, I may I've already explained how this under voltage uh, um, relay, auxiliary relay, that is always energizer for under voltage uh, relay um, uh, conditions, under voltage conditions on the transmission line, right? Okay. So basically, um, you have uh, this part, same thing. You have, uh, you know. Uh, Path, right that should be able to energize uh, this uh, second trip call 52t2 right so these are all the series permissive series right okay so the first one is my local selector switch that is a uh, 43 l or r should be in local mode okay so it should be 43 l right so 43L local, I should be able to utilize any of these uh, contacts that are in this selector switch. So I select local by moving this uh, control switch to this position, right? And vice versa. Okay. So then there's this push button, you know, in front of uh, uh, the uh, control uh, cubicle or panel for the breaker, breaker control uh, panel, right? Okay. That allows you to operate. Uh, the breaker okay so uh, once uh, i energize that that has to be in series with this and remember i also told you that uh, if there should be any uh, problem with uh, the uh, density of uh, the gas that is the pressure of the gas or density of the SF6 gas. Okay, so the SF6, the breaker utilizes an SF6 gas as a quenching medium, right? A, a dielectric medium uh, to basically, you know, if uh, because, you know, during the operation of the breaker, during um, either closing or contact parting, you know, uh, it creates an arc if uh, a fault should occur. So that itself uh, basically requires uh, um, a dielectric medium and uh, SF6 is utilized uh, to quench the arc, you know, that supports uh, the uh, operation of uh, the breaker. So if uh, the pressure level and the density is below uh, certain threshold, right? Uh, let's say at a uh, cutout uh, uh, level, that basically requires that uh, you know the circuit breaker has to be tripped. Uh, then, basically, you know this uh, uh, is needed as part of uh, the permissive uh, uh, stream, stream, stream. Then a 52A is basically the status of the breaker, right? So it requires that uh, the breaker has to be in the closed position because, uh, you know, remember what it's doing is uh, it's uh, basically, you know, trying to trip the circuit breaker. So it has to basically confirm that is the breaker actually in closed position. So this is an indication contact that is, you know, that provides uh, um, a feedback uh, and indication to that permissive strain to be able to energize uh, this uh, trip coil. Okay. All right. So. Same thing, you know, with a remedial action uh, scheme, you know, protective relay. Like I told you that the remedial action scheme, you know, it's a protective relay that has a certain criteria that it is required uh, basically to initiate uh, the required tripping, you know. And I gave you an example where you have two parallel transmission line. And uh, if uh, um, that is uh, connected to a generation source and you have another one that is connected to a generation source, if there should be a fault, usually the load on this end is going to be redirected on this line right and that might end up overloading this line and 
you because it might cause a lot of problems and thermal sagging, thermal, you know, a whole lot, you know. And uh, basically, we want to avoid that. So what we do, you know, what uh, is built uh, into the remedial action scheme is to build in uh, basically trip this uh, generation, trip this generation, so that uh, basically it prevents uh, that condition from occurring, right? Okay, so that is this part. So there should be that option if that sit, uh, condition or uh, situation should occur, you know, there should be the you know ability to be able to trip uh, the circuit breaker utilizing you know and like i told you that uh, this selector switch has to be in remote condition for this to okay 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 so next is uh, this path let's talk about this path okay so um you have uh, basically uh, 86 uh, t1 right okay so if uh, your transformer lockout really should trip right a contact from there so you know it's an auxiliary contact that itself uh, gives uh, the permissive you know for this uh, breaker to uh, trip uh, utilizing the trip circuit uh, uh, um, trip circuit um, uh, t2 okay so next is a uh, 86 uh, bf right remember i made mention that the 86 bf uh, it's uh, a lockout really for the breaker failure bf means breaker failure right so when does the breaker failure comes in so the breaker failure comes in when the trip circuit for this breaker fails right let's say if a trip call one fails then that is when uh, the uh, lockout really for the breaker failure really gets energized and that itself is supposed to provide an input as a permissive input uh, uh, to this uh, path to be able to energize uh, this uh, uh, trip call next is indicating light right okay so you know the indicating light uh, basically tells you uh, the status of the breaker right okay so as you can see over here this is the breaker fail lockout trips that is uh, uh needed you know so uh this part uh, is when you have a breaker failure and uh, basically the the breaker fails uh, to trip based on a uh, trip circuit uh, uh t1 and uh, that is when the breaker failure really itself gets energized then it provides an input to the auxiliary really lockout relay right uh, this is 86 bf is a lockout relay that has a contract that has a you know as a, if you see this uh you know uh, local release that uh, you know they has they have about 100 you know, contacts you know on a rotary switch right uh, so this is um, a contact out of that uh, lockout that is uh so that itself tells uh the trip call t2 that trip um trip circuit t1 failed to operate you know the breaker failed uh, to operate based on uh, trip circuit t2 so it means that i need uh, to operate uh, you know uh, uh, trip circuit uh, t2 and trip the breaker okay next is uh, uh the trip circuit for the other breaker right okay so um the other one it's uh basically you know uh, the output uh, form this uh relay you know the transmission line relay that should be able to uh trip uh, this uh circuit then the next one is uh, uh trip call monitor remember i told you that uh monitoring the trip call is very important so what this uh uh auxiliary relay is doing is and uh, this is the coil you know it's monitoring uh, the uh the trip circuit uh two and uh, the coil of uh, the trip circuit uh, two okay so what you can see over here are all auxiliary contacts right okay so for the under voltage relays okay so as you can see over here these are all um 2072 as you can see over here right okay so these are under voltage conditions and uh, basically based on the contacts from this uh, energization of uh, this uh, coil for the under voltage conditions you know and um, basically um, it's saying that uh, you know that contact is not used you know so basically you know if it depends on the philosophy that you have in place if you want to use that under voltage conditions uh, to provide an alarm to an announcer uh, panel or you want to provide it to a SCADA system or control center to be able to provide the, the required indication that uh, you needed for under voltage uh, condition next is auxiliary contact you know i made mention that uh, you know 
you know, for breaker control, you know, auxiliary contacts are very important. So these are all auxiliary contacts are for the breaker. So the 52A1, remember, this is an auxiliary contact. So during, um, it's a normally open contact, right? Okay, so if the breaker is open, this uh, contact is open, right? If breaker is open, contact is open. If the breaker is closed, then the contact changes state from normally open to normally closed. Okay. On the other hand, 52B is another auxiliary contact, right? It works opposite to 52A. So 52B, when the breaker is open, this contact is uh, closed. But when the breaker closes, then it changes state from normally closed to normally open. So it works opposite uh, to 52A. So these are all auxiliary contacts that, that are used then basically. Uh, it's a multiple contacts and uh, basically it's, you know, what you want to use it for, you know, indication, you know, usually indication is uh, one of them. Announcer, skater, RTU, then remote uh, indication to a control center, you know. Okay, so next is, uh, you know, uh, remember I made mention that uh, uh, the high voltage circuit breakers uh, utilizes, uh, you know, um, uh, SFC gas as uh, its uh, dielectric medium, as its uh, arc quenching medium, insulating uh, medium, right? Okay, so these are all. These are the contacts uh, that basically is from the gas, right? Uh, basically, the, you need to uh, monitor the pressure of the gas, the density of the gas, the temperature of the gas, moisture level for the gas, right? So these are all contacts that uh, you can utilize, auxiliary contacts that you can utilize, right? From this uh, 63 GA. So the 63 GA is the main contact and uh, these are all auxiliary contacts. Next is a 49 M. X. Okay, so this one is a thermal management uh, uh, relay, auxiliary relay for the compressor motor. Then a 27C is under voltage, right? Then a 83M is the compressor uh, motor, uh, auxiliary relay, um, compressor motor relay, uh, control relay uh, contact. Okay, so next uh, it's a uh, alarm circuit. Very, very important that, uh, you know, um, basically, you know, uh, uh for a circuit breaker you have an alarm circuit because you know without that uh, how would you know uh, if uh, there's a problem with your circuit breaker you know because remember um this um uh, uh, circuit breakers um are located in switch yards or substations very remote you know many many you know hundreds of kilometers away so basically you should have uh, an alarm scheme that gives you um if uh, something should be wrong with your circuit breaker okay so what are uh, this uh um alarm scheme that is saying that okay remember i told you that uh, this is in parallel right this is in parallel okay so either you have a problem with your gas right ssf gas that is low pressure for ssf gas you have the maximum minimum operating level then below that is the cutout where the breaker basically fa fails uh, to operate yeah you know you know it just cuts out you know it won't open or close right okay so so these thresholds when it drops below the maximum you know towards uh, let's say the middle towards uh, the minimum then that is when you can set uh, your threshold uh, for your alarm it's a uh, basically you know subjective uh you know um you have to determine the level that uh you know of gas pressure that uh you need to you know and sometimes you know you can have a nuisance alarm so you are basically you know it's based on uh, the weather uh changes uh, basically because the one thing about this um SSS gas is uh during cold weather what it does is you know it shrinks so the gas, uh, you know, because of the extreme cold, uh, if it shrinks, uh, basically it can drop, uh, you know, below the maximum towards the minimum, right? 
uh, level. So that itself can give you false alarms, you know. So uh, that is very important that, uh, you know, when this, you receive these alarms uh, is to check the validity of these al alarms by like going to the field and basically determine whether, you know, it's really, really um, uh, low SFS gas or basically false, you know, alarm, right? Okay. Then next is our density, you know, density you know, level and uh, also uh, basically sometimes you can have, um, you know, moisture uh, level that can degrade uh, basically, you know, the uh, sepsis gas. Next is our uh, 49 MX, right? That is the thermal uh, management relay, auxiliary relay for the compressor motor. Okay, so if uh, you should have your compressor motor that is running hot, right? Because that is the one that basically, you know, provides uh, um, the uh, mechanism, you know, uh, basically, you know, your uh, compression, you, you know, it provides uh, basically the pneumatic, pneumatic, uh, you know, air to be able to um, operate, uh, compress uh, the springs, right? And you know, uh, to be able to operate uh, the uh, breaker mechanism, right? Uh, breaker, you know, mechanical me mechanism, you know, it, which can either be hydraulic, um, etc. Uh, you know, uh, et cetera, you know, it has a uh, basically mechanical linkages, uh, basically, you know, that uh, um, helps us uh, to operate the breaker, you know, you know, either to open or close position, right? Okay, so if it is using a pneumatic um, um, uh, system, and that is um, uh, basically a compressor, right? And uh, basically, a compressor has a motor, right? Okay, so that, that itself, uh, this uh, what uh, this uh, relay is telling is a thermal management uh, auxiliary relay for the motor that tells you that uh, your motor is uh, running hot, and uh, basically that gives uh, an alarm, you know, to your uh, location, you know, whether SCADA, uh, remote uh, RTU, or control center, right? So these are all the conditions that, that basically, you know, and you, uh, it can also be an engineering console, DCS system, DCS system, or basically an announced panel, you know, indication. With that, uh, that comes to the end of my presentation, and uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed uh, this uh, beautiful presentation. So, you know, what, because this is one of the most difficult uh, uh, that uh, people find it uh, to uh, understand, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. schematics uh, is is tough, you know. I'll be honest with you, you know. So it's one of those things that you know a lot of uh, uh, um engineers i don't like you know but once uh, you learn and understand it i, I bet you it, it, it's it's a, it's a it's a basically uh it helps you it helps you because you know for you to if I, you should have a problem in the field your ability to understand schematics is what helps you to resolve uh, the, uh, uh, the problem in the field i'm, I'm telling you that I'll, I'll be honest with you if you don't understand uh, schematics if you don't know how to read schematics and understand it you know it will be very difficult for you to resolve our problems in the field, you know, I'm, be, I'm being honest with you. So that is why it is very, as part of uh, you young engineers out there, you know, spend that amount of time, you know, to learn and uh, understand schematics. Young engineers uh, that is in the power systems area, you know, yeah, and uh, project engineers, uh, you know, uh, project managers, spend that amount of time to understand schematics and basically you know that will help you and uh mid-career engineers do same thing you know if uh, this is the time uh, maybe you know uh to you know uh, basically shift gears you know from your comfort zone and basically you know try and basically you know um, learn schematics you know from scratch you know it's it's you see the whole thing is uh it's a philosophy right once uh, you start from scratch and you start learning you know basically then go from there you know, spend, you know, on a daily basis, uh, you know, just uh, 10, 20 minutes of your time, you know, learning schematics and build upon it, you know, and uh, believe me, it becomes a gift and uh, it becomes uh, basically, you know, uh, uh, the best uh, resource, uh, you know, tool for you to, for the rest of your career, you know, yeah. So, you know, and believe me, uh, schematics, uh, you know, can, can be tough and, um, you know, especially, you know, when, once you learn schematics and basically the worrying piece of it, you know, comes with it. Know, and uh, it's uh, basically a gift uh, that will help you to resolve a lot of full problems. Okay, so thank you so much, and uh, basically thank you so much for your uh, listening. Yes, and don't hesitate uh, if you like this video to select the like button in YouTube, subscribe button in YouTube, and don't forget 
to share 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 and don't forget to go to my youtube channel it's a lot of learning materials are for you to help you to develop yourself as an engineer mid-career engineer even experienced engineer this can be a refresher for you okay thank you